اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم پناہ لیتا ہوں میں اللہ کی شیطان مردود سے I seek refuge in Allah from shaitan the wretched one Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim I begin in the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al-sayyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon O you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed upon those before you so that you may be God-fearing Ayyamun ma'adudat this is for days few in number. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ However, should any one of you be sick or on a journey, then he should fast a number of other days equal to the missed ones. وَعَلَىٰ الَّذِينِ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ And those among you who can barely uh, cope with the fasting, then upon them is fidya, compensation, that is the feeding of a poor person. فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ However, whoso does good voluntarily, then that is better for him. وَانْ تَصُومُ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ How and that you fast is better for you if you only knew. This is the 184th chapter of Surah Al-Baqarah with regards to fasting. And these two verses are the first one to be revealed regarding fasting of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu kutiba alaykum usiyam. Kataba yaktubu means to write, to note down. And then it also means to make something compulsory, to fix, to prescribe. So fasting has been prescribed for you. This verse was revealed in the month of Ramadan or just before the month of Ramadan in the year 2 after Hijrah. So, Saum and fasting was uh, not given while Rasul Pak was in Makkah Mukarramah. The 13 years in Makkah Mukarramah, he did not used to fast uh, in those years. When he came to Medina Munawwara, he saw the Jews fasting on the day of Ashura. So he asked, what is this fasting? And they replied that, this is a day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued and saved Musa alayhi salatu was salam from Fir'aun and helped him cross the sea. So we fast uh, in order to remember that extraordinary event and in order to do shukr and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, we are more closer to Musa than you. So we shall fast and he ordered that uh, people should fast on this day. So they fasted on the month, on the day of Ashura on that year. And then when the month of Ramadan came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the order that now you must fast in the month of Ramadan. So then fasting in the month of Ramadan started from there. Uh, from there. Now, fasting and song is one of the five pillars of Islam. Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Buni al Islam wa ala khamsin. Islam is based on five pillars. Shahadat wa la ilaha illallah wa nuhumd rasulullah wa yiqamu salah wa yitahu zakah wa sawmu ramadhan wa hajjul bayin. So, sawmi ramadhan is one of the pillars. Just as if a building is supported by five pillars and you move out one of the pillars, the building will collapse. Similarly, if you move out any of these five pillars, building will collapse. If you don't believe in any of them, deny and reject their farziyat and being compulsory, then the person will become a kafir. However, if he believes that these are pillars and I believe in them, but he does not put it into practice, he doesn't pray, he doesn't fast, he doesn't keep zakat, he doesn't go for hajj, then such a person will be classed as a fasir, transgressor. And disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is putting himself in great danger uh, and, and putting himself in front of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, uh, psalm and fasting is uh, one of the pillars of Islam, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said over here, Kutiba alaykum Allah said, Kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum, as it was made fuzz and compulsory upon those before you. This means that fasting is an ibadat which has been coming from the time of Adam alayhi salam. Mu'arrikheen Mufassirin say that Adam alayhi salam also used to fast on the day of Ashura and on the three days uh, of every month. Um, it's, it's been written over here uh, in Tafsir Ma'arif al-Qur'an. 
regarding the fast of some other uh, prophets as well. Ibrahim alayhi salam, also Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam. It says in here one narration, let me read the hawala to you. It's narrated from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. Bismillah. Ibn Abi Hatim narrates from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the fasting of Ramadan first upon the previous nations as well. So it, Ramadan was first on the previous nations as well. Other Mufassirin like Mu'az ibn Jabal ibn Mas'ud ibn Abbas, Ata Baha, Qatada say that Ashura and three months of every day were made compulsory for Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam and since that time they have been going on. Hassan Basri says that Allah made compulsory one month's fasting upon the nations before you. So these are uh, different narrations with regards to Kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattakhun. In some in the Tafsir Mawahibur Rahman it is written that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Nasara to fast one month 30 days they used to fast, then one of their rulers or kings fell ill and they made an, uh, an oath, a vow, that if Allah cures him, they will keep ten fasts extra. So uh, he was cured and they started fasting 40 days. After a few years, some other incident happened and they increased another ten and made it total 50. Then after a few years, they found that 50 fasts mm -hmm. are really hard. Therefore, they gave up fasting altogether. Mm -hmm. And maybe it is for this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the day of Eid straight after Ramadan. And he has made it haram to fast on the day of Eid al-Fitr. That Ummat Muhammadiyah does not do the same by increasing the amount of fast which Allah has prescribed. So, uh, these, day, these days... Their fasting is limited to silence. A minute silence mm -hmm. upon the death of someone, or two minutes, three minutes, if someone is of a great caliber, high caliber. So this is, this is what remains from the fast which they used to do. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this command of fasting. Mm -hmm. Al-Ummati Muhammadiyya, as practicing on all, all other commands of Allah, practicing on fast even today as well. There are many benefits re re behind fasting. Today's lesson, we will focus on two things. The benefits of fasting and number two, the virtues and uh, the virtues of the month of Ramadan. Uh, the first subject will include virtues as well, we, including the benefits. First of all, number one, the first benefit of fasting is mentioned by Allah Park over here. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may gain taqwa taqwa means constant awareness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we translate it normally as god fearing so that we may be fearful of god we may have his constant awareness at the back of our minds which can help us to obey him and stay away from his disobedience and displeasure mm -hmm. so if we keep fast regularly the first benefit of fasting is the level of our taqwa will increase. And uh, we can feel this. When a person starts his fast through in the Ramadan, then in the beginning, his the taqwa is at a lower level. Mm -hmm. But as he progresses, then the, uh, his taqwa level increases. And as Shabi Qadr comes, and as the Eid al-Fitr comes, we can feel that, alhamdulillah, we feel ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can feel that taqwa and piety and fear of Allah entering in our hearts. So the first benefit of uh, keeping fast is that لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that we may gain taqwa. Number two, with fasting, we can protect ourselves against shahawate nafsaniyya, khayishate nafsaniyya, carnal desires. Our nafs and ego can be brought under control through fasting. Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَصْغِيَامُ جُنَّةُ مَا لَمْ يَخْرِقْهَا that fasting is a shield as long as a person does not tear it apart. Um, in in, in Fatuh al-Bari and other places, Shurah al-Kiram, this hadith is in Bukhari, that Jannatun means Jannatun min al-Shahawad. 
It is a shield from shahwat. When shahwat attack a person, then fasting will be a source of protection for him. And in one hadith, the Sulaim Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a min kum al-baad fil yatazawwad." O group of young men, whosoever among you can get married should get married, mm -hmm. it, because it, it keeps your eyes low and it protects your, helps you protect your private part and chastity. And whosoever cannot do so, then he should stick to fasting. فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ بِجَاءٌ Because it will be uh, like it, it will be a source of protection for him. So, Rasulullah uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Faalehi bi Sawm." If you want protection from shahwat, then you have to continuously keep fasting, and Inshallah, Allah will help you against the shahwat in Afsaniya. Number three, another benefit of fasting is gaining bodily health. That uh, we eat throughout the year, through eleven months, we eat so much that we don't recognize that what we are eating, how much we are eating. Normally, people don't have control over their eating habits. We just eat and eat and eat. Yeah. And as my friend Dr. Abdul Wahid Acha was telling me, that Mawlana Sahib, throughout the world, in the poor third world countries, people die because of poverty. They don't have enough food to survive on. Whereas in this country, people die of having too much food. That they eat so much that they are dying. I am a doctor. I, can, I have got cases of 30, 40 years old young men. And somebody has this illness, somebody has that, somebody has diabetes, blood pressure, high cholesterol, and uh, heart trouble, heart attacks, and this. All this is due to the junk food that goes in our bellies. So we need to flush it out time after time again, time and again. We need to go on a diet and control ourselves. Ramzan is a good time to have a good diet. So uh, if we keep fast properly, it will uh, bring us bodily health as well. That's why Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith narrated by Imam Tabrani in Mu'ajam al from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said, Sumu tasihu, fast and you will gain health. I had a friend, I once saw him, He, you know, he, normally he was very built, but he, he was good and healthy. So I asked him, um, are you on a diet or something or are you doing some special exercise or something? He said, no. Uh, I just started fasting for the last few weeks or months. And Alhamdulillah, through the fasting, I have gained this health. And uh, I am in good health, Alhamdulillah, just through fasting. I haven't done any diet or anything. I'm only fasting. I'm, Alhamdulillah, getting sawab of fasting as well. And at the same time, my body's weight and is, uh, uh, is under control. I have gained good health just through fasting. So we can bring our uh, a good health uh, uh, back through fasting. Number four, among the fawaid and benefits of, uh, of fasting is that, uh, especially in Ramadan, that fasting is a kafara for our sins, an expiation, covering, forgiveness, source of forgiveness for the sins. Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As salawatu al khams wa jumu'atun ila jumu'ah wa Ramadan wa ila Ramadan mukaffiratun lima baynahunna majtuni batil kabair. Five daily prayers, Friday to Friday, Ramadan to Ramadan. These are deeds which expiate and uh, forgive the sins which are committed in between. Yeah. In another hadith, he said, narrated by uh, Ibn Habban in his Sahih, that Man, man Sama Ramadan, Wa Arafa Hududahu, Wa Tahafara Mimma Yambarilahu, and Yu Tahafara Minhu, Kafara Ma Kablahu. Whosoever fasts in Ramadan, and realizes the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he protects himself from those things from which one should protect himself. Then this will expiate uh, the sins he had committed beforehand. That is why the Mashaykh say that if a person keeps his fast properly throughout the month of Ramadan, he will be cleansed and purified. And he will see the benefit of this throughout the oncoming year. That this, the benefit of Ramadan will be felt throughout the year that is to come. So we need to fast properly throughout the Ramadan in order to get this uh, kafara of our sins. Number five, another benefit of fasting throughout the month of Ramadan especially is that dua is accepted uh, in, 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 in Ramadan and in fasting as well. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith narrated by Ibn Abi Shayba in his Musannaf, As-Sa'im la turaddu da'watuhu. 
narrated from Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. A sa'im la turaddu da'watuhu that the uh, dua or and the, and the prayer of a sa'im, a person who is fasting, is not rejected, it is definitely accepted. Another hadith narrated by Bayaqi in his Shu'ab al-Iman, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Thalathatun la turaddu da'watuhum. Three persons supplication is not rejected. As-sa'imu hina yuftiru wal-imamu al-adilu wa da'watu al-mazlum. As-sa'im, when he is breaking his fast at the time of sunset, his dua is accepted. And a just ruler, and a person who is uh, mazlum, oppressed, and injustice is done to him, his dua is not rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah accepts these three duas. Number six, when a person fasts, it is a source of emancipation and freedom from the fire of Jahannam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, narrated by Musnad Ahmad from Abu Mama radiallahu anhu, Lillahi inda kulli fitrin mutaqa'u. Every day at the time of iftar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala releases and frees many, many uh, from the fire of Jahannam. Meaning that they had incurred the fire of Jahannam upon themselves by the sins which they had committed. But because they fasted with punctuality and properly, Allah removes their name from the list of those who are destined for Jahannam, who are doomed at to and going towards destruction. Allah, Allah wipes out their names from the list of those who were to go into Jahannam. Number seven, fasting is a benazir ibadat. An ibadat which has no other uh, resemblance. Nothing is equal to it. In one hadith narrated by uh, from Abu Umama radiallahu anhu, Rasul, he says, I said, Ya Rasulullah, dullani ala amalin. Instruct me and guide me towards a good deed which I can hold on to. He replied, Alayka bi sawm fa innahu la idla lahu. Hold on to fasting because there is nothing equivalent to fasting. Number eight, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith narrated by Tabarani in Mu'jam al-Awsat Man saama yawman fi sabilillah ja'ala allahu baynahu wa bayna al-nari khandaqan kama bayna al-samai wa al-ardi Whosoever fasts one fast in the path of Allah, Allah will place a, a huge massive trench between him and Jahannam and the width of that trench is like the, 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 the distance between the sky and the earth Allah will move him this much away from Jahannam by keeping one fast in the path of Allah. Number nine, fasting is a source of shafa'at. Fasting will intercede and speak for the person who fasts. He speak on the day of Qiyamah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-siyamu wal-Qur'anu yashfa'ani lil-abdi yawm al-Qiyamah. Yaqulu sawm, Rabbi mana'atuhu al-ta'ama wa al-shahawati bin-nahar fashafi'ni fi. ويقول القرآن رب منعته النوم بالليل فشفعني فيه فيشفعان. Fasting and Quran will speak up for a person on the day of Qiyamah. Fasting will say, My Lord, I stopped him from eating and from fulfilling his desires throughout the day. So accept my intercession for him. And Quran will say, Oh my Lord, I, I kept him awake and prevented him, stopped him from sleeping by night. So accept my intercession for him and Allah will accept their both intercession and Allah will pardon that person. So fasting is a source of intercession on the day of Qiyamah. And number 10, the sawab of fasting is bihisab, is uh, beyond calculation. Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah Pak said in one... Uh, he mentioned this hadith in which he quoted hadith Qudsi as well. He said, Kullu amal ibn Adam yudha'afu al-hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha. Every deed of Ibn Adam is multiplied. Every good deed will be multiplied ten times minimum ila sab'i miyati dhu'ifin to seven hundred times. Illa sawm, except for sawm. Because Allah Park says, As-sawm li wa ana ajzi bihi yad'u that he kept the fasting for me, so I will personally reward him for his fast. So the Allah. sawab of salat and zakat and hajj will be given through the malaika. But for the sawab for song will be given directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is extremely generous. Allah does not fear poverty. Uh, Allah's khazanas and his treasures are full. 
He has been spending his treasures since he created this dunya from day one. And we are using his treasures in this dunya. So imagine how many treasures and khazanas he has in Jannah. So Allah says, I myself will personally reward a person for his uh, fasting. And also, uh, number 11, Rasul Pak said that on the day of Qiyamah, when people will be taken to Jannah, there will be a special gate for those who are fasting uh, in this dunya that will be named Ar Rayyan. So, Babu Rayyan will be for those who used to fast. This is maybe for those who used to fast abundantly, as well as Ramadan, they used to keep a fast throughout the year as well, now and then. So, uh, their fasting will take them through the special gate uh, uh, in Jannah. And also, um, Rasul Pak said in one hadith that Psalm brings special shine on a person. He said, الطهور شطر الإيمان والحمد لله تملأ الميزان وسبحان الله والحمد لله تملأني ما بين السماوات والأرض والصلاة نور والصدقة برهان والصبر ضياء والقرآن حجة لك أو عليه كل الناس يغدو فبايع نفسه فمعتقها أو موبقها هي سيد الصلاة نور صلاة is light and illumination نور for a person and والصدقة برهان and sadaqah and charity is an evidence of the belief and iman of a believer. And he said, was sabru dhiya. And sabr is shine. And it, it, it brings special gloss gl uh, and shine on a person. So the Mufassirin say over here, sabr could be interpreted as psalm. Because in psalm, mm -hmm. a person has to be very, very patient. So Rasul Pak sallam, joined uh, salat and sadaqah with sabr, uh, with psalm. He said that if you keep psalm, then this will bring ziya and uh, uh, shine on, on, on your heart and on your face. The, uh, so this is another benefit of fasting. These are some ahadith and uh, nusus uh, which um, tell us the benefit of fasting. Therefore, we uh, in Ramadan especially should uh, keep our fast properly. May Allah give us the tawfiq to do so. In contrast to that, if a person misses out the fasting of Ramadan, then there is great wa'id for him. First of all, he has transgressed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will be classed as a fasid. He is breaking one of the pillars of Islam. And there is a possible possibility that he breaks and demolishes the other pillars as well. Mm -hmm. And once you have demolished the other pillars, then the person will enter the fold of kufr, go out of iman. Yeah. And when a person commits kufr, he will have to uh, stay in Jahannam forever and will not be allowed uh, out of Jahannam. May Allah oh. safeguard and protect Amen. us from the fire Amen. of Jahannam. So uh, this is one threat and wa'id. Another wa'id, Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man aftara yawman min ramadhan min ghayri rukhsatin wala maradin, lam yaqdi anhu sawmu dahri wa insamahu. Narrated by Imam Tirmizi from Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu. That if a person breaks or does not keep one fast of Ramadan without any genuine reason or without any sickness, then he cannot make up for that one single fast even if he fasts for throughout his whole life then still then he can't make up for that one fast which he had missed. Allah. That nur, that rahmat, that barakat, which uh, Rosa brings to a person, which, which it attracts, it not not be attracted by any other way if a person breaks the, or does not keep a single fast of the month of Ramadan. In one hadith, Rasul Pak said to the Sahaba, come closer to the member. Sahaba came and then he ascended the member. When he put his uh, foot on the first uh, step, he said, Ameen. On the second, Ameen. On the third, Ameen. When he came down, Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, what was this? We saw you do something which you don't normally do. And he replied, when I put my foot on the member, Jibreel alayhi salam appeared before me, and he said, may that person be doomed and destroyed, in front of whom you are mentioned, and he does not send Salat and Salam upon you. And I said, Ameen. Then he said, may that person be doomed and destroyed who gets the month of Ramazan and he is still not forgiven. He does not gain forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I said, Ameen. Then he said, may that person be doomed and destroyed whose both parents or one of them reached an old age, yet 
they did not take him into Jannah. And I said, Ameen. And in some narrations, Jibreel commanded me to say Ameen. Say Ameen. And I had to say Ameen. So, uh, the, 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 that will be great emphasis if Jibreel is telling Rasulullah to say Ameen. And uh, what question can there be regarding the acceptance of this dua when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying Ameen? Jibreel Ameen is making the dua and that curse. Therefore, uh, people who do not fast in Ramadan, they are putting themselves at great risk. Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi narrated uh, in his khutubat that uh, this, this hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa once narrated his dream I saw in a dream that the Maidan of Hashr a plain of resurrection has taken place and people are terrified running around and uh, things are taking place I saw the Malaika dragging one person towards Jahannam I, and he was calling out to me, help me Ya Rasulullah, help me Ya Rasulullah, help me Ya Rasulullah. So I told the angels to stop. And I asked them, what's his problem? What's his guna? What's his sin? And they said that, uh, Ya Rasulullah, this person violated the respect and sanctity of the month of Ramadan. He used to eat and drink in broad daylight in front of the And and never kept Rosa fasting. So Ramadan and fasting put a case against him in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he lost the case and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered no. that he should be dragged into the fire of Jahannam. No. That's why we are taking him there. No. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I am sorry, I cannot interfere, I cannot speak up for you. And the malaika took him and dragged him into the fire of Jahannam. May Allah protect us. Amen. So Amen. this is uh, the, the, the great wa'id and warning for people who neglect the command of fasting throughout the month of Ramadan. Small, small flimsy reasons and uh, they say that uh, we can't keep Rosa. Maybe sometimes people will say that Rosa is too long, we can't keep it. Some will say, I am a doctor and I have to do operations on people. So if I keep fast, then my mind is boggled and I, I, do, I make mistakes in my operation. So I can't keep fast. I have got my exams in front of me. And if I keep Rosa, then I can't concentrate. So I'm not keeping Rosa. These are all very, very minor, flimsy excuses. Uh, 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 th these excuses does not excuse a person from uh, exempt a person from fasting. You still have to fast when you are healthy and uh, you have you have no other genuine reason. You will not be exempt from fasting. You will have to keep fast. And uh, 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 if 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 there is if what you call uh, uh, any solace, we can think about those people who are living in extremely hot climates. We see people working in Riyadh, in Jeddah, in Dammam, in those places outside on construction sites and in the extremely hot weather of that Sahara Desert they are still fasting and they don't feel the effects, they work they might uh, program their work in such a way that uh, 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 when the heat is intense in the afternoon they might take an hour or two's nap and rest but after that, uh, during other times they are working. And uh, I read one in one place that this incident made a person study Islam and accept Islam. Oh, sure. this, uh, same, he was working in Riyadh and uh, he was a non-Muslim. When Ramadan came, he says that, you know, I used to feel extremely thirsty. And uh, time after time I'm there drinking the water while we are working in the heat. And I see these Muslim workers, they, they, they are, you know, they are working and uh, they don't feel the need for that uh, water. So I thought to myself, how can this be possible? Mm. So then I, I tested it out myself. Alhamdulillah, I felt nothing wrong. And uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, it caused him to study Islam and embrace Islam. So um, we should make an attempt, we should make a firm resolution that I want to keep fast. Let me mention this, uh, my, my grandmother. My maternal grandmother, she was of 90 years age, she just died a few months ago. When last Ramadan, she was extremely ill, my uncle said to her that, Nanima, you know, this year you are not capable of fasting, so leave your rosa, we will give you a fidya. And she replied, no, I have never missed any fast throughout my life, and I'm not going to miss this year. 
And she kept all the fast throughout the month of Ramadan at the age of 90. So when a person makes this, like, I want to do this, then Allah will make it easy for him. We have to make an intention to do it, Allah makes it easy. But what happens today is people plan from ahead that I'm not going to keep the roza and then they'll go around searching for muftis, which muftis will give me a fatwa and excuse me. Some, you will find someone, there will be plenty of muftis out there who will give you fatwa. It is up to you to make a firm intention that no, I'm going to keep it. If, if you find it hard, then take time off work. Can you not take time off work? If you can take uh, time off work for your leisures, why can't you take time off work for your akhirat, for your hereafter, for your ibadah? Mm. So this is the, what we should be doing throughout the month of Ramadan. We have to keep fast. Now moving on to the second subject of uh, the fazilat and virtue of Ramadan. There are special hadiths regarding the virtue of the month of Ramadan. Allah said in the Quran, Shahru Ramadan, alladhi yunzila fihi al-Quran. Inna anzalnao fi laylatul qadr, wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. So these uh, uh, ayat show the virtue of Ra Shahru Ramadan. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So we were talking about the virtues of fasting. Let's talk a little bit about virtues of Ramadan. Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, Man sama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddamu min dhambihi وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمُ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمُ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whosoever fasts Ramadan with belief and with intention and hope of reward, his past sins will be forgiven. Also, whosoever stands up in the night prayer, throughout Ramadan with Iman and intention of Thawab his past sins will be forgiven and then he said whosoever stands in Shabi Qadr the night of power with Iman and sincerity hope for reward his past sins will be forgiven this shows the virtue of the month of Ramadan in another hadith when Ramadan would start Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wasallam would say, Atakum Shahru Ramadan, Shahrun Azimun Mubarakun, Yagshakum Allahu Fi, Fayunzilu Rahma, Wayahutul Khataya, Wayastajibu Fi Hid Dua, Wayanzuru Allahu Ta'ala, Ila Tana Fusikum, Wayubahi Bikum Mala Ikatahu, Faarullah Min and Fusikum Khaira, Fain the Shaki, Faarullah Min and Fusikum Khaira, Fain the Shaki Man Hurima Fi Rahmatullahi Azawajan. A month has come to you, it is a very blessed month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers you in this month. He showers His mercy upon you. And He wipes out sins. And He accepts du'as. And He looks at your competition with one another. And He boasts through you to the angels. Therefore, show your good deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that person is definitely deprived and mahroom who is deprived of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in this month as well. So, Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned many things that Allah's special mercy is being showered upon you in this month. And Allah is wiping out sins after sins, sins after sins, cleaning, cleaning. That is why in one hadith he said, أَوَّلُهُ رَحْمَةٌ وَأَوْسَطُهُ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَآخِرُهُ عِتْقٌ مِنَ النَّارِ That the beginning of this month is Rahmat, and the middle part is Maghfirat, Bakhshish, forgiveness, and the last portion is freedom from Jahannam. Hazrat Shaykh Rahmatullah narrates that the reason for this is that people are of three types. Some are bakshe bakshay meaning they are extremely pious they have no sins on them so for them the rahma and mercy starts from the very first roza first fast and the first 10 days rasulullah mentioned are extremely rahmat and mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the second category who have good deeds and bad deeds mixed who are in need of forgiveness when they have kept, started keeping Rosa 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
they have kept rosas properly, they have prayed taraweeh, they have recited some Quran, they have spent their time in good deeds, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes these good deeds for their forgiveness. And in that second ashara, the second ten days, people are being forgiven, forgiven. And then the third category is of those people who are extremely sinful, who have spent their life sinning. But however, when the Ramadan came, they showed special respect to Ramadan, and they kept Ramadan, a Rosa fasting from the very first day until the first ten, second ten, and then the last Ashara ten days, they are fasting, they are praying Taraweeh, they are praying Talawah Tasbih five times a day properly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees their names from the fire of Jahannam. Now it is up to them to keep their names out of the list of Jahannam. Because if they uh, go back to their own ways after uh, Eid al-Fitr, then they had wiped their name, now they are, they are putting their name back on that list. So don't put your name back on that list, keep it out. This is what Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa said, wa akhiruhu idqun min nar that the last ashara is emancipation and freedom from the fire of Jahannam. In one hadith, Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa said, a great month has come upon you, in it is a night which is more virtuous and better than 1000 months. Min alfi shahr. And whosoever is deprived of the rahmah in, uh, 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 of this night, then he is surely a deprived person. Rasulullah sallallahu went on to say, wa shahru sabr, wa sabru sababuhul jannah. Ramadan is a month of patience, and the virtue of patience is jannah, and the reward of patience is jannah. Meaning, you will feel the urge to eat, to drink, to do things uh, which you desire. However, you will have to control yourself. You will have to do sabr. Especially for the first few fast, you have to do a lot of sabr. You have to control your nafs. Uh, hungry, thirsty, at work, but you have to control yourself. If you do this, keep yourself under control. Rasulullah said, was sabru sawabul jannah. The reward of sabr is jannah. You will definitely go into jannah. Also, people who smoke, they will feel like smoking throughout the day, but they will have to avoid their smoke and stop. Sometimes, you know, they don't get the smoke and uh, it gets to their brain and they start fighting. That is why Rasulullah said that, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفُ فَلَا يَجْهَلْ فَإِنْ جَهِلَ عَلَيْهِ أَحَدٌ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ When it is a day of fasting for one of you, then he should not do anything of ignorance to anyone. If someone does uh, anything of ignorance and evil to him, then he should say, I am fasting. He should say to that person, or he should say to his own nafs and self, and control himself that I am fasting, I shouldn't argue and I shouldn't quarrel. It so happens. Once I was getting out of one masjid, now there are two doors, one of the doors was normally stays closed and the other one is normally open. But if it was the first of Ramadan after Asr Salah and there was a huge crowd. Now someone said, why open that dusra second door as well? And the other one said, no, cold and draft will come inside. And the other one said, can you not see this crowd over here? And they both started arguing and then you know, a, nearly a bust up over, that happened over there. So someone said in my ears, Mursab is a cigarette yada here. I know he smokes a lot, so he, he, his cigarette has got to his brain. So you have to keep patient. And especially if someone wants to give up smoking, then Ramadan is a good time to give up smoking. And smoking is not something good. We should try and give up those who smoke uh, because uh, it, 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 it's very, uh, it has very bad effect on the health and uh, on the health and wealth. So why should we waste our health and our wealth? May Allah give tawfiq to those uh, who smoke to understand and give up this bad habit. So uh, Rasulullah said, it is a month of sabr, patience. He went on to say, wa huwa shahrul muwasat. It is a month of uh, um, muwasat, hamdardi. Uh, being courteous to one another. Showing your courtesy to one another. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, man fattara fihi sa'iman. كَانَ لَهُ مِنَ الْأَجْرِ مِثْلَ أَجْرِ مَنْ صَامَهُ لَا يَنْقُصُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْهًا Whosoever helps a person do iftari and break his fast in this month, then Allah will give him the sawab of all those persons whom he helped open their fast. And the sawab of their fasting will not be decreased. They will get full sawab and he will also get full sawab. Both will get full sawab. So this is the reward of showing kindness to one another in this month. 
And uh, it does happen. One of the effects of fasting is that our heart softens. Because when we eat too much and our belly is full, then the nafs is, and the ego is also full and it, it thinks of bad things and whispers evils in our hearts and minds. But when our belly is empty, then the nafs ego also shrinks and it doesn't want to do bad things. So then it, our, our heart gets soft. And then uh, uh, we can uh, uh, get the ability to absorb the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can realize the suffering of our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters throughout the world. We can think of them, we can at least pray for them, we can give some charity for them. When we are hungry, we are thirsty, we think that we are only doing this for a particular few hours in this month. But they are going through this throughout their whole life. They, they have nothing to open their fast on or eat even by night as well, even after Maghrib as well. They will be hungry and thirsty even after Maghrib. Oh, so we can think a little oh. bit about them. Bishri Hafi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, a great wali of Allah. He was once in the, in the masjid on a wintry night, shivering, while there was a blanket by his side. Someone asked him, Hazrat, why don't you take that blanket and cover yourself and you are shivering in this cold? And he replied, I'm only doing this because I know there are plenty of poor people in the city of Baghdad who don't have blankets, who don't have warm clothes. So I'm doing this so I can think about them for a little bit, that there are people who are going through this. Then I can pray for them, I can ask Allah to help them and uh, remove their problem and difficulty. If I don't do this, then I will also be neglectful of them, I won't remember them, I won't pray for them. So these are the Ahlullah Sulaha. Oh. They think about other bit. So one of the benefits of fasting is we, th we have this muwasat and hamdardi and show our kindness to one another. The, this is among the benefits of fasting. That is why Rasulullah said in the uh, uh, hadith that you should try and help people open iftari. He also said in that hadith, Man taqarraba fihi bi khaslatin kana kaman adda faridatan fi masira. Whosoever does an optional deed in this month, he will be rewarded as though he had done a fard and compulsory deed in another month uh, of the 11 months, in a, at another time. And man, ta, man adda fihi faridatan kana ka man adda sab'eena faridatan fi masika. And whosoever uh, fulfills one fard act upon him, then he will get sawab of fulfilling 70 fard acts in a, at another time. So, sawab is increased and multiplied throughout this month. This is why this month is very, very great and very blessed. Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, إِذَا كَانَ أَوْبَرُ رُلَيْدَةٍ مِّن شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ صُفِّدَةِ الشَّيَاطِينِ وَمَرَدَةُ الْجِنِّ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ فَلَمْ يُفْتَحْ مِنْهَا بَابٌ وَفُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْهَا بَابٌ وَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلْ وَيَا بَاغِيَ الشَّرِ أَقْصِرْ وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَٰلِكَ كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ Tirmizi عَنَ أَبِي هُرَيْرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ That when it is the first night of the month of Ramadan, the shayateen, the devils, are chained. And the sharir and rogue jinns are also chained. And the doors of Jahannam are locked. And none of the doors are opened. And the doors and gates of Jannah are opened. And none of them are closed. And a caller calls out, O seeker of virtue, proceed and do good deeds. And O the one who is seeking evil, stop and uh, don't go forward, don't do bad deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many people who are freed from Jahannam. Uh, throughout the month and this takes place, this freedom and emancipation takes place on every night. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that shayateen are chained and they are thrown away at, in some of the oceans somewhere. Also maradatul jinn are also chained and thrown away. So what happens? They cannot distract the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa from doing good deeds and they cannot uh, take them to bad deeds and sins. I was watching this small two minute uh, video on YouTube, the devil. I have plenty of videos, some show shaitan, you know, with two horns and sharp nose and a small goatee beard. 
very scary person. And uh, he gives some advices. He makes people either do divorce. They show that he's sitting, a couple are sitting and they start arguing. He whispers this in this mind, and he whispers in her mind, and then makes them fight and tells him, oh, divorce, divorce. And he ta -ta -ta -ta. finish. Also another video of a family sitting down to eat and uh, shaitan is outside and looking from the window and the family sitting inside, the father says, say bismillah, and everybody says bismillah, and then they start eating. And shaitan is angry, I can't. And then another family who are sitting down, who don't say bismillah, and shaitan is sitting on another chair, he's a fat shaitan over there, <laughs> and he's gobbling up, chomping all the food. So then, another shaitan, in one uh, video, he comes up and he says, um, I, I, I'm, I'm going away for Ramadan, and I'm going to miss you. Are you going to miss me as much as I'm going to miss you? <laughs> and then he says, look, throughout Ramadan, you should do this, 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 this. And don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. He stops from all the good deeds. Don't fast, don't read Quran, don't pray five times a day, don't do any good deeds. And keep doing what I've told you. Keep your bad habits, this, this, this. And then he goes away and he'll say, I'll meet you after Eid. So these, it's in Arabic, but the translation is given at the end. Maybe it's in the Arab channel somewhere, mm -hmm. but it's really nice and effective. So, shaitan is chained and he's taken away. Now a question arises here, then if shaitan is taken away, then why do people sin? Why do they do gunas? The answer to that is that guna is not committed just because of shaitan. The reason for guna and sinning, there are two sources and two reasons, two causes of sinning. One is outer cause, that is shaitan. And the other is the inner cause, that's nafs. So nafs and shaitan, they are both real brothers. So if one is gone, the other is still there. So the nafs instigates a person to do guna. Then the question arises, what is the benefit of chaining the shaitan then? Then the answer to that is that when there are two causes of sinning, then you feel the urge uh, much heavier. Mm -hmm. But then one cause is eliminated, there's only one cause, then it makes it lighter. So then, if you want to become a little bit strong and stop that sin, then you have the ability to do so and you will be able to avoid the sinning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping us. He is saying that I have taken shaitan away. Now I want you to stop even though your nafs is with you. But try and control your nafs and uh, uh, stay away from sins and do as many good deeds as you can. This is the benefit of uh, uh, taking shayateen away. Then uh, the doors of Jahannam are closed throughout the month of Ramadan. Maybe the punishment upon many people is stopped. Those who have died in their graves. The doors are closed and the punishment does not reach them. That is why among the virtues of dying in Ramadan is that that person is protected from the punishment of the grave because of his death in Ramadan and also death in Jumu'ah. There is a special virtue for a person who dies in Ramadan, for a person who dies on the day of Jumu'ah. Someone asked Mufti Mahmudul Hassan Sahib Gangohi Ramadullah regarding the singer Muhammad Rafi. I think he died on Friday in Ramadan. That Hazrat, he you know, spent all his life in singing. How come he died in Ramadan? People think that he is a very sinful person. He should die on some other day. So Hazrat Mufti Mahmud Sahib Rahmatullah replied, Bhai, he Ramzan or Juma, he Allah ne bichare aise gunhegaron ke liye to rakhi hai. Jo nek aadmi uske liye to sare din barabar hai. That these, the, 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 whom we think <laughs> sinful, it is barakat and this. Maybe Allah was happy with some of his good deeds, and like something of his good deeds. Maybe he had recited a real nice poem, not in praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah liked it so much that Allah gave him the month of Ramadan on Friday. But a person who is pious, he doesn't need Ramadan, he doesn't need Jumu'ah, he can go on any day. Rasulullah didn't pass on Jumu'ah, he passed on Monday. So, uh, for the pious person, all days are same, any time the Malakul Maut can come and take him. But for a sinful person, he needs this. So Allah has kept these blessings, Rahmat, Barakat, for people, maybe. You know, we shouldn't think about anyone who dies in Ramadan that he was sinful. No, no, no. Pious people also go in uh, Ramadan as well. Hazrat Ali Karamallah Wajahu was Shaheed, martyr on the 17th of Ramadan. Hazrat Aisha passed away on the 17th of Ramadan. 
about 18th of Ramadan. So uh, pious people also go, but don't think bad about any person. Allah knows whose condition is what. Anyhow, so the, 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 the doors of Jahannam are closed and uh, no, none of them are open and the gates of Jannah are open and they are not closed. In another hadith, Rasul Paak said that Jannat is beautified and decorated throughout the month of Ramadan every day. So new additions are made, new decorations are placed. So when we go, then our Jannat is there ready for us. So Jannat is decorated every day throughout the month of Ramadan. The doors are open. So from Jannat, the, the, the cool breeze of the Rahmah and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is flowing throughout the globe and everywhere. That is how you can see that Alhamdulillah, we feel really nice and our heart is softened in the month of Ramadan. Masajid are full, people are fasting, people are running for Taraweeh. MashaAllah, you know, even in this day and age, when there is so much distraction and attraction towards sinning and disobedience, Obedience of Allah Park. Still, we see thousands of people rushing towards the masjid for their taraweeh. So, this is the barakah of the month of Ramadan. Also, Rasul Park said that a caller calls out, Ya Baghi al Khair Akbil. If you want to do good, then come quickly, proceed, rush, because this is a time to do good. Don't waste time, don't, don't waste your energy, don't waste your time. Do as many good deeds as you can. Prepare for your akhirat. And a person who is going after evil, stop. Don't do any more good, uh, bad deeds, do, don't, do, don't sin anymore. Uh, uh, so stop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees many people from the fire of Jahannam. And uh, that is every night. These are the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another hadith, Rasulullah Paak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is given plen- countless blessings throughout the month of Ramadan. One of them he mentions, خلوف فم الصائم أطيب عند الله من ريح المسك the, the, the smell from the uh, mouth of a fasting person is more likable to Allah than the fragrance of musk. Now, the smell of the mouth is of two types. One is when a person has woken up from sleep and he has bad breath. This is something that we should remove through miswak. And when we brush our teeth, when we uh, do miswak, the, the smell goes away. We should stay clean, we should stay hygienic. Another is... When a person is extremely hungry, then as the day goes on, and it's uh, Asr time after Asr time, even if you brush your teeth, that s- smell is still there. And it comes out due to the emptiness of the mi'da, of the stomach. So th- th- Rasulullah is uh, uh, relating to this second type. That b- when uh, the day moves on, a person is hungry, thirsty, and he's weak, frail, and this smell comes out of his, even though he's doing his miswak, it is, doesn't go away then this smell is more beloved to Allah than the fragrance of musk. Meaning Allah loves that person who has fasted just as we love that musk perfume and uh, we have love for that. So Allah loves that person who uh, uh, keeps that fast and the, who, uh, this is the effect of his fasting upon him. Number two, Rasulullah mentioned, تَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ الْحِيْتَانُ فِي الْمَا That every, every creation does istighfar for that person who is fasting uh, 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 to the extent that the fishes in the water are also seeking forgiveness for that person who is fasting through the month of Ramadan. So the whole creation, the birds, the animals, the fishes, they are all happy with the month of Ramadan, with the Muslims who are fasting throughout the month of Ramadan, and they all pray and seek forgiveness for uh, the persons who are spending their time in doing good deeds throughout the month of Ramadan. Also he mentioned the tazeen and decoration of Jannat which we have just covered, and tasfidu shayateen and the chaining of the shayateen. And the fifth he mentioned, layla. They are all forgiven in the last night of the month of uh, Ramadan. And the uh, Sahaba required, uh, asked, Ya Rasulullah, is this the last night, the night of Qadr? Rasulullah replied, no, it is a time uh, when a laborer accomplishes his task. He is given his wages, his remuneration. So when a Muslim person accomplish this hard task of fasting throughout the month of Ramadan, Allah gives him his wage in this dunya in the form of maghfir. That I have forgiven all your sins which you have committed uh, in your previous uh, uh, life and previous years. Uh-huh. And you can start afresh now. This is the barakah of fasting in the month of Ramadan. May Allah give us a tawfeel to uh, keep Amen. fast properly Amen. throughout the month of Ramadan. Amen. Moving on, um, what are the a'mal that we should do throughout the month of Ramadan? First of all, we should fast properly. 
And fasting properly does not just mean avoiding drinking, eating, and sleeping with the uh, 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 with the partner. It, it includes everything. Um, it includes controlling our bellies, controlling our private parts, and controlling our eyes, not gazing at unlawful things. The fast of the eyes is not looking at haram unlawful things. The fast of the ears is not listening to haram things. The fast of the tongue is spe not speaking any evil words, always speaking good words throughout the month of Ramadan. The fast of the heart and heart and the mind is not about bad things and sins, controlling the heart, controlling the mind. So, even to the extent that the Sufi Kiram say that the fast of the inner part of the heart is that the, a person has complete reliance and tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. To the extent that many of the mashayikh did not use to keep anything for iftar. E even if something came in the day, that keep this for the time of iftar, they would send it to some miskin and poor person. They would think that this is against tawakkul, tawakkul e kamil, relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they say, Allah will provide for us. When the iftar time comes, Allah will send us rizq for us. Okay. So this, if we can't do that, we are not at that stage. But there were mashayir whose fast, who, whose inner part of the heart also fasted throughout the month of Ramadan from anything that disconnects a person and takes him away, furthers him away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They used to fast from that. So uh, the, the, this, these are the adab of fasting. Hazrat Shaykh Ramatullah has mentioned them in Fazail al-Ramadan. If we can do ta'aleem of Fazail al-Ramadan throughout the month of Ramadan, is very good in the masjid. In our homes and it's very beneficial it changes the changes the life of a person tells him the real value of fasting and how it should be kept so first of all our five our our, our siyam should be proper hundred percent secondly our five daily salat we should be punctual about five daily salat try and pray them with jama'at fajr zohar asr maghrib isha sometimes what happens is at work we miss zohar jama'at at iftari, we are home and we don't feel like going to the masjid, so we pray at home. And at fajr, we are tired, we just made sahari, so we thought you think we might as well pray at home. No, try and go to the masjid. And for the month of Ramadan, try and pray all five salats in masjid. If you make an effort, inshallah, Allah will make easy for you. I went to uh, the USA, um, um, Cincinnati, for Tarawi some time ago. Dr. Umar Saab, my friend who, was, who invited me, was my host. He used to work, he was a surgeon in hospital. And he used to read the radiograph. And he would go hospital and for Zohar Salat, he would drive half an hour to come to the masjid, perform his Zohar Salat, and then drive another half hour back to the hospital for work because he didn't want to miss his Zohar Salat with Jamaat in the month of Ramadan. So there are people who are so punctual that they would drive just in order to catch the Salat with Jamaat. So we should be punctual about Jamaat throughout our life, but in Ramadan there should be extra precaution should be taken to perform all daily Salat with Jamaat, with takbir ula if possible. Malana Anwar Alam Sahib came here, he just come here for his madrasa work. So one day he was taken from one masjid to another and people thought that the Salat is at so and so time, but it was 15 minutes earlier. When they got there and the Salat had finished, he was extremely grieved. Even though he was a Musafir, he said, this is the first time I have missed my Jamaat in the month of Ramadan. That why did I miss my Jamaat? He was a Musafir, he was here for his old uh, Madrasa's work. And he was running around all the time. But he was so punctual, he never missed Jamaat. And he says that I missed Jamaat, why did this happen to me? And uh, he was really grieved. So we should try and pray our five daily Salat with Jamaat inside the Masjid as soon as much as possible. And then we should try and perform our Taraweeh properly. Taraweeh should also be performed with Takbir -e ula Some people do pray Taraweeh, but they are sitting at the back, a bit lazy. When the Imam is reciting, they are talking. And then when Imam goes into Qudi, quickly get up and Allah Now that should not be the case. This is a sign of laziness of not valuing and realizing the value of the virtues of Salatul Taraweeh. And also, this is disrespect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you should be respectful and pray our salah to Tarawih properly. Salah to Tarawih, uh, we might talk in the another lesson. The proper sunnah of Salah to Tarawih is 20 rakats and 3 bitter. This is the sunnah since the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And it was the sunnah during the Khilafat of Uthman and the Khilafat of Ali radiallahu anhu. And for the past 1400 centuries, it's been the case throughout the Islamic world. And it's been like this in Haramayn Sharif and even till today as well. Mm. Some people have uh, sprouted up from somewhere, sprung up from somewhere, and uh, they are saying that Taravi is only 8 rakats. No, 8 rakats is wrong. 20 rakats is the Sahih Taravi, and we should pray 20 rakats in full throughout the month of Ramadan. And I don't have the need to go in there. People say it's in Bukhari that you used to pray no more than 8. I say, okay. Bukhari said, this leave one side. Tell me what was the practice of Imam Bukhari himself. Okay. Imam Bukhari himself, Rahmatullahi alayhi, used to pray one khatam every day in Ramadan and every night he would pray ten siparas, ten Jews, one third of the Quran. And he would finish his Quran every third day in uh, uh, Taraweeh, uh, Nawafil, after Isha, uh, throughout the night. So he himself used to pray so much and you are saying just pray Itrakat and go away. In eight rakats, you can't even do one khatam of the Quran. Because if you pray so slowly, and in eight rakats, you can't pray so much, you'll get tired. And that is why in the masajid in the Arab states, where they have started eight rakats, they don't do khatam of Quran. They only pray a few sipara, few ayat, few surat from here and there. They don't do any khatam of Quran. So where is the khatm, sunnah of khatam of Quran gone? You can only do khatam of Quran with easiness when you pray 20 rakats. The sunnah of Umar radiallahu anhu. So that is the correct way. Wherever you are, wherever you go, you must pray 20 rakats. Men, women, ladies at home should pray 20 rakats. That is the correct way of performing tarawi. And also give your zakat properly. Give your sadqah fitr properly. If you can do i'tikaf in the last 10 days, do i'tikaf. If you can 